so we can start. <coughs> Thank you all for coming it's Saturday morning for the first panel. As it's obvious from the scenery, we are missing a panelist. Uh, Agnes Gagi, Gagi, I'm not sure how to pronounce the Gagi, probably. Uh, Gagi, okay. Uh, had to cancel uh, her participation due to overexhaustion. As you said, so we are all, uh, have to rely only on, on uh, Alexander. Uh, his presentation will be a little bit longer than than it, uh, it was usual on the panel, so we can uh, compensate for Agnes uh, missing. For Agnes missing, uh, so after his presentations, we will be presentation, we'll also have a discussion, and maybe also in discussion we can evoke some uh, discussions uh, uh, that we had uh, previous uh, in, in previous days, especially if they rela relate in some way to the Sasha's, uh, uh, Sasha's presentations. Sasha is really an uh, Alexander. Alexander uh, Stojanovic is from uh, Belgrade. He's now on uh, his postgraduate uh, student of uh, philosophy. He started to be politically act active two or three years ago during the so-called student autumn uh, in Belgrade. He's mostly now interested in uh, critique of political economy and related matters. And the title of his lecture is uh, a longer one. Uh, some notes on the historical dynamic of the Serbian political context and its consequences uh, for building uh, the left, uh, so Sasha will try to explain the specif specificity of uh, Serbian ideological situation, especially concerning the left in the 90s and after it, because of the legacy of Milosevic and how Milosevic uh, that dealt with the legacy of socialist uh, Yugoslavia. It was, this situation is in, in, in Serbia is it's very specific, as Sasha would argue, not only in the global context but really in the re regional context. context and the, some kind of ideological confusion and confusions and contradictions are uh, really prevalent in Serbian uh, context. It's in the situation is much more complicated than in Croatia or in Slovenia or something, or in other countries. So please, Sasha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will oh, uh, also the usual stuff. Uh, I'm going to read because uh, I, I believe that I will articulate things better than if I just talk. So I will start from a simple statement that although in general it was relatively usual to see the left political forces make progress in the last few years with the crisis and the social movements emerging, we didn't see anything similar in Serbia. The left in Serbia is, we can say, today as marginal as it was a few years ago. This leads us to ask for the reasons behind this specific situation, and the main goal of my talk will be to produce one possible answer. Now, let me make a few, we can say, methodological remarks on what I'm going to do. Uh, they may seem a bit abstract and they may seem relatively common sensual among us, but it's better to make them explicit now than to suffer the consequences of a misunderstanding. So, the first remark. I want to note uh, that there are many ways to approach this issue of uh, the marginality of the left, and non not all of them are mutually exclusive. One possible way to do this, which is probably commonplace, refer refers to sub subjective capabilities and decisions of the left activists in the past few years. According to this way of thinking, the inca incapability of the left to transcend the marginal position in Serbian political life and to emerge from public non-existence is related to the inca incapability and limitations of individuals working on Serbian left. This somewhat, somewhat moralizing position isn't rare within the rel relatively small camp of those who try to think critically about the development of left in Serbia. However, I will try to expose somewhat opposite perspective that not only searches for the objective preconditions of the actual failure of the left, but the one within which uh, the possible mistakes in tactical reasoning of the left co leftist collectives throughout the last few years are seen as something that stems from the lack of the sensitivity to the specific Serbian ideological context, as Marco said. Um, as to the question uh, uh, of above-mentioned uh, personal critique perspective, uh, I want to add that even if we ignore the main point that I'm going to develop 
uh, about the ideological context and uh, which which was and still still is very complex. Uh, the one thing that we have to bear in mind is that this context is not something that the left groups and the agents can ref reflect upon from a safe distance and could reflect upon from a safe distance throughout these years, but something that deeply influences their own way of understanding themselves and the political concepts and criteria they will use. The ambiguity and complexity of the ideological context that we can determine now uh, after some time has passed, had at the time its own consequences on the way that the left agents could conceptualize the context and, the, and themselves. In my view, this kind of vicious, uh, vicious circle of ideological actuality limits the scope of any kind of personal critique that can be made ex post facto, that is now uh, when we speak about what, what happened earlier. Uh, now comes the second remark. Uh, when talking about the left in Serbia, which was uh, for many years thoroughly divided between those who thought of themselves as, as activists and pr practitioners and those who thought of themselves as theorists, uh, it is important to emphasize that I don't pr propose to treat the ideological problematic as the only relevant problematic. I don't propose uh, that the overcoming of uh, actual ideological limitations and blind spots of the left would guarantee a, po a political success for the left. As, as banal as this kind of position might, se might seem, the belief that the left political practice should exclusively consist of ideological intervention could be ascribed to many who worked on the left throughout these years. Indeed, it is not hard to perceive other notable problems that the left has to deal with uh, if it wants to transcend its existing limits. We can only mention the organizational problem or the problem of producing the adequate policy propositions in relation to specific political situation in Serbia. In a way, the ideological problematic is inseparable from the ones I just mentioned. And, uh, and it represents a secondary aspect in all of them, as it is related to conceptualizing and presenting the possible solutions. Now, if we take this, this view into consideration, it, can be, it could be objected that we cannot, as I want to do now and here, uh, that we cannot treat the ideological problematic and the future ideological rep representation of the left in Serbia autonomously. To this objection, we should co counterpose the fact uh, that the agreement between the activists and groups on precise ideological orientation within actual ideological context while having in mind its previous dynamic and the analysis of this dynamic, is a primary determinant if they are to approach and deal with any problem that may come up on any level in an efficient and satisf satisfactory way. If this agreement is absent, it is probable that the different groups and activists will conceive the manner to deal with these problems in a totally different way. This is related to the previous, po previous point that I made. As much as it might uh, be a basic, basic thing, I want to point out uh, that the agreement on the ideological representation on, on, of the left, or any other political position for that matter, is not something that is made between neutral agents in a r rational and uninvolved way. Uh, the conceptions which may enter the ne negotiation and the joint consideration of the ideological representation uh, uh, which they are about to adopt them, uh, are themselves influenced by the present ideological context. I think this will be more uh, clear when, when I come to the empirical stuff and the, the historical dynamic. Uh, it may already seem that the possibility to make this precise kind of precise agreement in analysis of ideological context and the correlative decision to make uh, on a precise ideological orientation that the left should adopt is relatively small. And this may look even more improbable <clears throat> if we think of the generally present habit among the leftists to disagree and part their ways because of even the smallest disagreement. But in relation to this, I want to note, and this would be my third remark, th that the analysis of Serbian ideological context and its dynamic <clears throat> that I'm about to produce here is not something radically new and inconceivable when, if, when we think of the situations in other countries. This is something related to what Marco said. In fact, I would say that this context is in a way a more extreme form of the ideological context present in many countries. Because of this, I hope that the agreement could be achieved. Uh, and if this hope is reasonable, 
uh, then we would have to conclude that the actual disagreements in ideological analysis and orientation on the left probably stem more from the ignorance, uh, ignorance and lack of dialogue on the topic than, than from the su substantially different approaches. Uh, to make clear from the start what I uh, uh, meant when I uh, what I mean when I say that the st state of Serbian ideological context is in a way a more extreme version of a rel relatively common situation present in many other countries, I want to bring uh, <clears throat> to the table something that Michel Luson said a few days ago in Belgrade. When, he, when talking about the prospects for radical left in France, he said that the problem beforehand is related to the fact that in the ideological context of France, everybody presents themselves as, as the left, and that the radical left struggles to discern <clears throat> itself as a true left position. <clears throat> uh, in Serbia, and in similar, similar ideological context, <clears throat> we can say that the problem is just the opposite. At present, in Serbian politics, no one substantially tries to present themselves as leftist political position. <clears throat> uh, to say for yourself that you are a leftist, or, or, or even a rightist to that matter, or that you are for a left politics, does not provide any, provide any kind of uh, legitimation and brings no prospects for any amount of political power uh, uh, that, that would come your way. Uh, if you state this kind of thing in Serbian public, it is almost as no one would even understand you. I think that this kind of ideological context is present in many other countries. But I would also say uh, that on, the, on this point, the Serbian example is an extreme one. This might uh, become obvious uh, through the rest of my talk, but if it doesn't, I propose that we take upon it in the discussion. Now we can say that uh, the fact that the left political uh, left as a political signification is relatively in, in, incomprehensible uh, in a way speaks for itself. But we can also say that from our own theoretical perspective, its real significance can uh, only become apparent if we put it in a historical context and out understand how it came about. From this point on, I will try to analyze things by separating this historical dynamic into three periods, the 90s, the 2000s, and the period of 2010s uh, that I want to name extended 2000s, so the, the, the 90s. Concerning the nature of the ideological context of the 90s, we should certainly start by considering the role of Slobodan Milosevic. Uh, the Serbian ruler that was the head of the state from the dis disintegration of Yugoslavia through the period of ethnic conflicts in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo conflict afterwards until the, he was overthrown in the street protest call, uh, by the so-called democratic opposition in October 2000, so the 90s. Uh, uh, from an external perspective, Milosevic, uh, could look as a typical, a typical post-socialist dictator that started the restoration of capitalism in a peripheral, co peripheral country of Europe. But the fact is <clears throat> that this, this depiction is wrong. We can see uh, why that is the case if we, for example, uh, take into account the difference between and the Croatian dictator Tudjman. On the one hand, Tudjman was a milita military general, general of a Yugoslav army in the times of Yugoslavia, who took off his uniform at the moment uh, in which the more war of the 90s began. And he's re he revealed his purely nationalist position. Uh, in his pro-capitalist politics, Tuzman did not hide his intention to privatize and sell Croatian ex-Yugoslav enterprises to Western capital, more or less, uh, or at least to privatize them very harshly. We could say that this typical uh, behavior of post-socialist rulers, this was a typical behavior of, of post-socialist rulers in this part of the world. On the other hand, Milosevic, uh, who was no less consistent in privatization, primarily to the be benefit of domestic capitalists, so-called tycoons, and also no less nationalist than Tuzman, kept a pro-Yugoslav, pro-socialist appearance until the end of the war, and even until the end of his rule, uh, five years later in the 2000s. 2000. The army that he led in the Yugoslav war was called Yena, the People's Army of Yugoslavia. And the party which he was ahead uh, of was called the Socialist Party of Serbia. And until the end of his rule, he ascribed himself 
to a kind of certain uh, anti-imperialist politics that defended the pe people's interests from the interest of foreign capital. This Milosevic's positioning to the left part of the political spectrum <clears throat> determined the significance of the expressions like the left or pro-Yugoslav in Serbia for a long time, as we shall soon see. We can say that the predicament of the left ideological space was not only determined by the fact that Milosevic's so socialist party was a major agent of privatization, like so many so-called socialist parties in this region, but also by the fact that at the same time uh, as it was pursuing this restoration of capitalism and bringing the demise of general wel welfare, it implemented a strong nationalist, anti-European, anti-imperialist popular rhetoric. This ideological complexity <clears throat> was uh, also mil misleading for, for the left understanding of Milosevic abroad. Leftists, and among, uh, amongst them most notably Noam Chom Chomsky, uh, uh, thought that the fact that Serbian socialists led by Milosevic didn't take the road of transforming the, their party into a so-called left liberal party that would be directly obedient to the Western capital, as was done in the majority of post-socialist countries, was good enough, uh, this was for him a good enough proof that Milosevic uh, really led a consistent left-oriented politics. In doing so, big part of Western left wasn't able to acknowledge that Milosevic was really the one that started the mass privatization and that his nationalism was not a kind of anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist pa patriotism that we see in Latin America but really a capitalistically oriented na nationalism that helped newly emerge, uh, emerging domestic capitalists to immiserate the people of Serbia. Big blows to the material state of the people that were, ne uh, that were necessary for the capitalist restoration to reach its expected level were, de were dealt in the name of socialist politics. Even when at the end of the 90s the so-called democratic opposition rose against Milosevic, it rose against his presumed socialist collectivist politics and it rose in the name of capitalism, entrepreneurship and self-interest. Even the social benefits that were, that were expected to come out of the adoption of this alternative position were expected to come from a privatized, more liberal economy. Not, small, not a small number of trade unions even at the time saw the privatization and the selling of domestic enterprises to foreign capital as a way to ensure the greater, greater welfare for the workers of, the, of those enterprises. This is well documented in the recent study by, made by Goran Music on Serbian working class in transition. In this period, consistent left politics was almost in, inconceivable, inconceivable because the left in the uh, public eye meant either that Milo the Milosevic politics or the social demands incorporated in the position of the so-called democratic opposition that we just mentioned. Uh, this is the ideological context in which the left-oriented intellectuals and the public spokespersons of the Yugoslav period uh, chose which kind of left they want to ascri ascribe to. And the student movement resistance that emerged, Otpor, that emerged in the last years of the 90s connected itself uncritically to the idea of capitalistically oriented Serbia of democratic opposition. Now we come to the 2000s. We can see that the, uh, uh, that the Serbian ideological context was dominated by two in interconnected problems in 2000s. The one problem was the separation of Kosovo, the region in the south of Serbia, and the other was the EU integration. Simplifying just a bit, we can say that the two political blocs were formed. On the one side, we had a position that was trying to hold the line according to which Kosovo, a southern region of Serbia, uh, in the process of separation, is an inherently uh, uh, inherent part of the sovereign S Serbian state and that integration to the EU is unacceptable. This was a kind of conservative nationalist position. On the, other, on the other side, we had a position that was oriented towards EU integration and was against defense of Kosovo as a part of Serbia. It is important, this is relatively usual uh, opposition between the conservative nationalist and the so-called progressive uh, liberal democratic uh, position. Um, on, uh, so. It is important to notice that these two blocs weren't only cast as uh, uh, politically opposing poles, but also as a kind of ethical, identitarian difference between the ref, uh, rational, pragmatic and civilized on the one side 
and the irrational barbaric but uncompromising uh, on the other. Uh, considering th this differentiation, uh, we can first notice that as much as those positions were far removed from each other, they agreed upon a point that some kind of socialist collectivist logic still present in the minds of people was to be blamed for the grievances of Serbian society. This anti-communist, anti-socialist position was all pervasive. This was a direct consequence of Milosevic's positioning as a socialist, uh, that, uh, as a socialist that we mentioned above. And the fact that uh, the 2000s were defined as a break from the dark socialist 90s uh, was also relevant. Also, we can uh, uh, see that the spe specificity of anti-communism, uh, we can see here the specificity of anti-communism in the Serbian post-Yugoslav context. It is not uh, controversial to say that the anti-communist sentiment in post-communist uh, context uh, stemmed more from the reaction to the consequences of the so-called socialist, uh, of the politics of the so-called socialist parties that took the power after the breakdown of the real socialisms. But the specificity and the extremeness of Serbian situation is related to the fact that the anti-communism that emerged in reaction to Milosevic's uh, politics was in a way more right than the one present in other countries. Of course, this is only uh, in a certain way. Uh, in other countries, there is uh, these so-called socialist parties uh, were very explicit in, pre in presenting themselves as pro-Western liberally oriented parties and socialism uh, was in many cases only a name. Uh, as we already mentioned, in the case of Milosevic, the strengths of anti-Western, anti-imperialist, socially oriented politics were explicitly present. In this way, the preconditions for the total delegitimation of some, something that represents itself uh, as the left were put down. Now, at the same time, there is another aspect that could be seen as the opposite, opposite of the one that I just mentioned. One of the most relevant thing about the two positions that we mentioned uh, was that the sign of socially oriented politics was in a way ascribed or at least tried to be appropriated by both of them. The sign of socially uh, sensitive politics could be placed in front of the position that represented the politics of sovereignty toward Kosovo and resistance toward the European U Union because this position could be seen as a form of national anti-imperialist solidarity and autonomy position that tried to protect Serbian people from the Western exploitation. This, could, uh, this sign could uh, also be put in front of the orientation uh, that advocated the giving up of Kosovo as the bottomless pit that swallows Serbian money and the, the in intensive uh, work on EU integration and as, as this would supposedly relax incre and increase the Serbian budget and open the space for socially sensitive poli policy, at, at the same time helping Serbian economy to recover. Also, the real social issue, issues that were present in Serbian society at the time could be manipulated in a, such a way as to become mere elements of pro-nationalist or pro-EU EU position. For example, struggle over LGBT rights could, be, uh, could appear as a part of pro-European agenda and not as a social issue that it really is. And also the idea of anti-NATO politics uh, that was important in Serbia at the point because of the bom bombing uh, of NATO in the, in the 90s could also be perceived as a part of a nationalist agenda and not as a part of anti-militarist or anti-capitalist politics. Obviously, there is no contradiction between the fact uh, this fact and the above, above mentioned delegitimation of the left. The socially sensitive dimension was only present as an additional reason for the political proposals made by, uh, by these two positions. Uh, they were never casted as proposals uh, within the political position that primarily concerns itself with the social welfare of the majority, that is the left. Of course, a question that can be legitimately posed at this point is why these explicitly non-left forces felt the need to cast their political proposals as, as proposals that would solve social issues. Uh, here we can introduce an important strand of thought on Serbian, po Serbian political dynamic uh, that is proposed by our comrade Anna Veselinović present here. We can say that uh, the real cause for acquiring the governing role of the parties on Serbian political scene uh, 
is that a party has succeeded to represent itself uh, and its political agenda as the one, that, the one that would resolve the social issues and would be able to raise the standard of, of living. And this makes a lot of sense if we take into consideration the fact that the standard of living has fallen drastically after the socialist period as and it was never able to recuperate. If this is so, then we can say that the parties in Serbian uh, politics added uh, this social dimension to the representation of their politics because uh, of the right political instinct. Uh, and this enables us to make a few important uh, insights. First, there should be a strict differentiation between a political position that utilizes the socially oriented legitimation of its political proposal and the political position that explicitly articulates and legitimizes it itself as a left position. This is, this is one. Uh, on the other hand, the obvious fact that stems from this insight uh, is that the capitalis capitalistically oriented parties, that is all the parties present in Serbia, uh, once they gain power on the basis of the so social pledge that they made, slowly need to start changing their rhetoric as the consequences of their rule are more and more obviously anti-social. This was true of the parties from the democratic opposition as, and as we shall see uh, soon, uh, this, is, this is now uh, true of the parties that are governing and that are going to govern for Serbia for the next few years. But uh, this was also true when we think of Milosevic. Towards the end of his rule, it became more and more obvious that no social progress is being made, and Milosevic changed the accent of his rhetoric, so to say, from a socially oriented one towards an anti-imperialist position. The important thing which differentiates Milosevic on this point is that because of uh, this diminishing of the socially oriented rhetoric, he didn't stop to represent himself as someone from the left. Turning back to our story, we can see uh, how the ex this exclusive opposition between nationalist pro-capitalist politics and liberal pro-capitalist politics, in which both sides more or less explicitly uh, adopted neoliberal economic policies based on attraction of foreign investment, was disagreeable for any kind of consistent left politics. These positions constructed a big part of its own legitimacy as the only existing alternative to the other one. As much as the left groups in Serbia tried to form an autonomous position and plead for a coherent socially oriented politics, they were nonetheless perceived as a part of, the, of one of the two existing blocs. Specifically, at one point, left groups tried to take part in the initi initiative for the gender and sexual rights, so that, they, uh, so, uh, that in the end they become perceived as a par part of this pro-EU tendency, as this was a pro-EU issue, uh, issue more than a social issue, really. It was uh, represented as a pro-EU issue more than a social issue. Great parts of general population opposed this initiative uh, more because it, it isolated the rights uh, uh, these rights from other social problems and other social rights that were also missing. And uh, uh, because it, pus it pushed these rights in a way that was intentionally insensitive and aggressive towards the existing traditional culture, rather uh, than because they had problems with these rights in themselves. Uh, as these issues were... Uh, uh, as the issues uh, where this opposition between pro-European and nationalist positions would become obviously ir illusory, uh, like the bas basic e economic ratio that was related to the idea of foreign investment, were ca carefully excluded and marginalized, left considered the participation in one of the publicly rec recogn recognized issues as the o their only possibility. And now we come to the, uh, to the 2010s. Coming to this period, I first want to explain why I propose to call it, call it the extended 2000s. The reason behind this proposal is that unlike the transition from the 90s to 2000s, where the ideological context changed in a significant way, the transition from 2000 to 2010s uh, in, uh, did, does not involve this kind of change. The fact is that a new tendency that would, uh, that would deal uh, with the problem specific to this peri period has not yet emerged. The political field consists of three positions, of which two are more or less the continuation of the propositions uh, that existed uh, uh, throughout 2000s, uh, and the third position. 
One position is the coalition democrat uh, gathered around Democratic Party, and it consists of parties of an anti-nationalist liberal position. It represents a direct continuation of the pro-European position of the actual 2000s. The other position is the old nationalist tendency, mainly represented by Serbian Radical Party and the Democratic Party of Serbia, uh, and by some other smaller gr groups. Both of these old positions have lost a big part of their electorate. This group of vo voters supports uh, the uh, uh, that supported these two big parties or positions ha can now uh, be classified as the voters of this third position. Uh, this, this position uh, is, uh, that is today in power in, Ser uh, in Serbian government uh, is uh, more or less uh, formed by one party or by two parties but one is dominant that is called Serbian Progressive Party. This party, and this is very, very interesting, this party was formed by the old members of Radical Party, that is the Radical Nationalist Party from the 90s and 2000s, that wanted to artic articulate a nationalist politics that is not so much re uh, removed from the pro-European position. In a way, uh, this party represents a mix of the opposing positions that dominated 2000s. Being a nationalist party with lot, lots of nationalist rhetoric and aesthetic, but also being ready to pursue the European road of Serbia and even implicitly to acknowledge the loss of Kosovo, which was unconceivable for the nationalists in 2000s and 90s. The other big party included in these third blocks is surpri surprisingly the former Milosevic party, the Socialist Party of Serbia. After losing the elections of 2000 and the fall of Milosevic, the party was barely able to cross the census. But today this party uh, is a part of the ruling coalition as, and, and has a rel relatively strong support of 15%. Uh, today social, the Socialist Party, like the Progressive Party, is the kind of pro-European party with a type of nationalist rhetoric. The, the party tries to, rest, uh, to represent some of the social demands, but this is, uh, in, a, in the best case, a flirt, because it supports the neoliberal propositions that are presented in the parliament. The first thing that we have to notice about the peri period after 2010 is that we cannot really see a new position. This is why uh, I call this period the extended 2000s. This statement is highly contestable. But the de definitive reason of, uh, that supports uh, 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 this, uh, this kind of analysis is uh, uh, the fact that ideologically this ter new third bloc is a kind of, uh, really a kind of combination of nationalist and pro-European positions that were present in 2000s. In a way, uh, the already mentioned ethical differentiation between the rational, pragmatic and civilized on the one side and the irrational, barbar barbaric but uncompromising on the other is still uh, the only functioning di differentiation. Also, uh, uh, in the 2000s, all the existing positions are more or less openly, neo as in 2000s, uh, more, more, all positions are openly uh, neoliberal. Now we, we, can see, uh, we can say that the similarity of the ideological context of the 2010s to the context of 2000s entails that all the difficulties from the uh, articu of articulating a consistent left position uh, in the 2000s are also present now. Uh, even if the Kosovo problem is now not as present in public as it was 10 years ago and the European road of Serbia is more, le more or less uh, certain and its consequence, uh, consequence is less interesting for the debate, these, the things haven't yet really moved on. Uh, like in 2000s, the main question that presents itself before a kind of position that tries to emerge uh, is how much nationalist and how much pro-European it is. This is obviously a false, er false alternative in the eyes of anyone who tries to articulate a left political proposal. Now to conclude, uh, we can add that the first traits of new ideological context are really starting to appear. Uh, in this perspective, we, uh, probably the most important phenomenon is the emergence of anti-corruption politics that is playing an important role in the agenda of Progressive Party. Uh, the adoption of anti-corruption -cor politics uh, is probably the biggest reason for the amount of support that the party enjoys today. 
I think that besides the fact that from the left perspective, we need to be critical of this idea that the material misery of the people is the consequence of corrupted politicians uh, that, didn't, that didn't work in their interest. We also need to acknowledge that the necessity to include this kind of political proposal and reasoning means that the deep social, social mat ma material issues that are dominating Serbian society for a long time cannot be ignore, ignored in the way that they were ignored or manipulated in the mentioned dile dilemmas between pro-European and nationalist, nationalist positions. We can see that now uh, they are starting to take toll on the dilemma between nationalism and pro-Europeanism, and that it is not enough to cast the nationalistic or pro-European politics as a kind of socially oriented one. In a way, we can say that the bar for becoming a socially sensitive political option in the eyes of the people is starting to rise. The material misery of the people in Serbia imposes itself uh, more and more explicitly, and at this point, the anti-corruption politics can appear as, the, as an answer to this question. As I try to stress out, this doesn't mean that the openly left political orientation is uh, inherently more acceptable. Uh, when we take this into consideration, we see the size and the nature of the distance that the ones in, interested in building the left in Serbia have to overcome. Here we should uh, be able to tackle the question of the social movements as something that uh, in what many leftists put their hopes these days. Not only that the appearance of a social movement wouldn't by itself enable uh, this separation, this distance to be overcome between the socially sensitive position within the, uh, within the conceptions present in the Serbian pub public and the left position. Uh, as we know, uh, that it is usually uh, imbued with, the, uh, the social movements are usually imbu imbued with a kind of anti-political, neither left nor, uh, nor right sentiment. But if we take into consideration the fact that the victory of Progressive Party was gained on the basis of introducing a new, explicit, very explicit and intensive anti-corruption rhetoric uh, that uh, very precisely mirrors the general opinion on, uh, that the worsening of the material situation has to do a lot with the immorality of politicians, we can see why any, uh, any kind of social movement is still missing. If the analysis is right, it is probable that it will not emerge for some time in the future. It is usual to start the reflections on the prospects of the left by pointing, pointing out that with the austerity measures and the bailouts, we, can, we come to a kind of crisis of legit, legitimacy or democracy. But I want to finish by saying that, at least concerning the Serbian context, and I am not sure that this, is, uh, this point is so, rare, so rarely true, the basic fact from which we have to start our thinking is that even though the social standards are deteriorating and the different parties in, in power are leading the same politics in an important sense, we don't find ourselves in a crisis of democracy or legitimacy. So fi finally, to conclude, I want to state that the left not only needs not to presuppose that the increase in relevance of the social problematic in Serbian pu public inherently opens a place for left, and that because of it, uh, a politically effective social movement will probably emerge. But that uh, the first step in the ide its ideological self-orientation self still is related to its capability to found political conceptions and criteria that are fully autonomous from the distinction between the civilized, pragmatic and progressive anti-nationalist position and its nationalist opposite that I mentioned. If we are to intervene in an eff effective way that will not end up in being manipulated by these dominant forces uh, and that will succeed in becoming visible, we have to understand the issues and the position that should be taken up uh, on them in the terms that are not only relatively specific versions of the two uh, opposing terminologies, as, as was not rarely the case in Serbia. Uh, this, is, this, of course, is a big challenge, and there is no guarantee that it will be re resolved pos positively. But I would say that greater danger at this point is to think that, distinction, uh, that this distinction between the civilized and barbaric became overcome and outdated by itself, and, we already, and that we already think in some <laughs> other and politically more profound terms.
thank you, Sasha. We will open the discussion, but before uh, I have to correct uh, one mistake about our mm -hmm. bad guy, uh, Tujman, he wasn't a part of the military till the 90s and then switched his uniform. Uh, he was, he, he, in the late 60s or early 70s, he, he abandoned out, me. Uh -huh. uh, okay. out and he worked after. He was in jail for a little bit and he worked in the Institute for the History of Workers' Movement. Mm -hmm. So he was not <laughs> that kind of pragmatic guy, he was more an idiot guy. So, okay, okay. The director, yeah, yeah. The director of, of the Institute. So, we have all. Okay. So, also interesting guy in this position. So, please, questions, comments. Steve. Um, you said that um, the notion of at one point anti Europeanism became uh, um, a dominant aspect of, of this, you know, at least the rhetoric. But uh, if you look at it, um, some of the statements from the 80s, you know, um, he was, you know, as an American banker, it was, you know, mm -hmm. banker school in, in, in the United States and, and so on. And if you look at some of the, the proposals he made, it was explicitly pro market and pro European integration. In fact, I believe all of the, um, uh, the whole, um, if there is, was one thing, every, uh, every um, uh, uh, Republican Party, uh, that is the League of Communists, so every, uh, they all wanted European integration. Mm. The question was um, that some wanted it uh, outside of the Yugoslav framework. Mm. Uh, Slovenians and Croatians, you know, and they thought we are uh, much more advanced on that road anyway. You know, let's get rid of the the backward uh, uh, the Balkan uh, Balkans, you know, which are dragging us, uh, uh, you know, slowing us down and dragging us into this this uh, swamp of the you know the Balkans and, uh, and all all of these ra the ra racist narratives that you mentioned, you know, this opposition between the rational civilized and European and the and the backward rational and the Balkans has been. In that sense, always an underlying, um, you know, narrative, and and it's not that Milosevic was anti-European anti or anti-West at that point, of course. I mean, he was even the IMF perceived him, you know, as, as the man to talk to like the Americans in for a very long time, and so on and so on and so on. It was only a bit later yeah. that, that he adopted, uh, but these were the, the circumstances to choose. It's yeah. not that it was mm. it was simply an opportunistic, um, you know, um, rearrangement, a resetting of, of, of ideological, uh, 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 you know, uh, terms, and he did that often, as you know, back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was in that sense, and then, and then when you say he was as uh, nationalist as uh, Tuchman, well, I would say, you know, Tuchman, if, uh, if you can say anything um, um, uh, on behalf of him, he was really, um, you know, he was uh, a romantic idiot to the end, you know, in his nationalism, you know, yeah, at least yeah. the, uh, the way he perceived it. But also, he wasn't like that. Yeah. I mean, he was much more, um, you know, he was a power politician, much more than than uh, than an a, a, a fanatical ideologue, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, like Tuchman. Like yeah. So should I answer now? I'm dark. Uh, this is more comment to Stipe's uh, comment. Uh, it is true that, that Milosevic was pro-European, but uh, as you said, it was in the late, uh, uh, through the 90s, especially the late 90s, he took this anti-imperialistic uh, uh, code, to, so to say. But uh, what is important, I think, what Sasha was uh, trying to stress uh, for the ideological context, it was that he was perceived as that uh, during the 90s and especially uh, uh, start of 2000s and uh, uh, till now, especially like uh, 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 pro-socialist, pro-pro-pro-pro-anti-anti-Europeans. Uh, uh, so uh, that was uh, what uh, dominated uh, in the protests uh, during the 90s and, and later. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main pros uh, slogans was. Uh, anti-red bourgeoisie, so mm. that was how it was perceived. So it, it uh, left uh, uh, great consequences for the building of the left uh, from the, the uh, even in, uh, during the 90s and especially uh, uh, after that period. Yeah, I, I want to add now just a thing. Uh, it, it was even worse uh, in the case of Milosevic, this game of being anti-European, anti-imperialist or not. 
uh, and it was so pragmatic that uh, it, he was even, and I, I don't know if you know this fact, but it's, it's really uh, totally extreme. Uh, he was even candidated for Nobel Prize for Peace in the 90s, before the Kosovo problem emerged. So they were, the, they even, after the war, they even, uh, they even gave him, there was this kind of uh, possibility that, they, that he will come out as this, I don't know, uh, because of the Dayton agreements. Uh, he would come out as this peacemaker, uh, even if he in Serbia was represented as someone who was pushed to make the Dayton Agreement, who didn't want to make it, uh, but because uh, Serbians were dying in the war, he wanted to save them and so on. And uh, but he was uh, uh, there was uh, this opportunity that he will become this kind of peacemaker of the Europe. And not the the blood maker of the Europe as he, he is now perceived. So uh, this this trajectory of possibilities uh, where Milosevic uh, uh, played on uh, on that he will become the pro-European force in in Serbia uh, and have the this legitimation from the Europe itself was present throughout the, the uh, almost until the end. And uh, yeah, and the, the other thing. Is I I don't know uh, whether we should uh, uh, talk too much about it here and now, but uh, it's very interesting uh, to follow Milosevic's statements from the end of the 80s and the uh, and the beginning of the 90s, and uh, to lo look at his rhetoric, and it is very specific. Uh, mm, even the first big uh, big uh, big moment, the Co Kosovo issue, when he went to, in the late 80s to the Co to Kosovo, and uh, when when he said the uh, Serbian workers are right, uh, the, the Albanians are uh, uh, oppressing them and so on. Uh, it was very, uh, it is very interesting uh, uh, and you could say uh, this is just uh, just a part of the, the way that politicians spoke uh, in, in Yugoslavia because it was a socialist country. Uh, but uh, the words that he uses for the uh, for the part of the elite that supported the Albanians and against was against the Serbs or wasn't but was perceived as being against the Serbs uh, in Kosovo at that time was that they're uh, they're re reactionary they're stopping the revolution the, these were the, the the words and you can say okay this is the way everybody had to talk at that point but uh, I I would say that there is a, a little bit more than that. Uh, in this uh, in, in this way of speaking, and he was, uh, and now when you look at the, the his position in the end, and the the fact that uh, the the sister party of the socialist party that was formed uh, in the 90s uh, by his uh, by his wife uh, Mira Marković was called Yugoslavian Left. Uh, uh, with Yugoslavia, this old Yugoslavia that it really referred to, and not this small Yugoslavia, this piece of Yugoslavia that uh, uh, that only existed, uh, didn't exist, and they, they made a party called Yugoslavian Left at that point. This this is very, I, I would say that this uh, says a lot that he he had uh, he invested much to pursue this kind of uh, of uh, leftist representation of himself. I wouldn't say that anyone of the post-socialist uh, figures, power figures, pursued this kind of uh, always trying, way of always trying to, to legitimize himself as some ki someone from the left. So more questions or comments? Just a really? short comment that, yeah, picking up on what you just said, that basically I agree with this. And it is to be re-emphasized, especially if you put it in, uh, if you compare it with uh, uh, the region and other post-socialist mm. countries, like, uh, for instance, in Romania, uh, the lack of uh, this um, any history of anti-imperialist uh, or anti-European policies in the uh, late uh, early 90s led to an internal differentiation amongst that cursed block, pro-European bloc, which actually ruled the, the political sphere. And from that internal differentiation between straight neocons, let's put it this way, and moderate Western-centric liberals, right? From that internal differentiation emerged the, the, the new, uh, the new, the new <laughs> positions. So that dominated uh, uh, for a long time uh, the political spectrum.
And that, I think, has to do with the previous historical lack of an anti imperialist position. Hmm. Good. Yeah, I wanted to ask a short one. Well, having in mind what you describe the situation is and, and all this uh, historical path that has been uh, taken, um, what did you say? What is the, let's say, the direction that people who are uh, involved in this left attempt of building left from the scratch, let's say, what is the direction that should be taken? Is it, I don't know, is it maybe um, producing some kind of knowledge analysis, or is it maybe producing knowledge plus, let's say, I don't know, some civil society organizing, or is it trade union organizing, or how, 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 how do you say it? Yeah, well, I, my here I uh, try to uh, to argument for a, a relatively negative proposal and a relatively negative conclusion, uh, relatively minimal also, but I think very important and usually usually ignored or or forgotten. Uh, that is that this uh, opposition between the, the, the so-called first and second Serbia or so the, the rational, civilized and the barbaric but, uh, uh, but uncompromising is still uh, in a way present. Even if this kind of uh, progressive party that is now ruling is obviously not, uh, uh, you cannot put them in one of these two baskets. Uh, but uh, and uh, because it is present, as I said in the beginning, uh, it on doesn't only mean okay, we see it, we 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 know that it exists. So we are now, as we reflected upon it, we are distanced from it. We can have our position and construct it as we want. Uh, this means that uh, this kind of uh, opposition is always lurking behind and trying to, in a way, uh, become the the, the 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 functioning within any kind of distinction that we make. Uh, on the left, and the leftists are making, and I think this is something that must mustn't be uh, forgotten. Because, uh, and I think we uh, we fall into uh, this trap relatively usually still uh, that our position is the civilized position. In a way, we we wouldn't ever say it. No one on the left would now say these days that we are some kind of civilized political position against the barbaric one. But uh, I would say also that this, uh, when you uh, push the, the arguments and the criteria that people use on the left today uh, a, a bit further, uh, it more or less comes up. So uh, that's, that was the thing that I tried to argue uh, here. And uh, concerning the question, uh, I, the, the, the question then poses itself in this way. If this opposition is still present and actual and functioning, how do we uh, really or what are the things that uh, would guarantee us or enable us to, to overcome it or to go our way? And uh, I would say in the first instance, uh, the knowledge production, because uh, uh, if uh, it, because when uh, and I would uh, I want to bring this to uh, to the table also. Uh, you can have you know one one way to to think of this opposition is okay. If we are anti-capitalist, all is safe. If we are anti-capitalists, it's obvious that we are not any uh, uh, we are not uh, a part of these two uh, two blocks. But it is not right. Uh, you can like proclaim anti-capitalism all you want. This distinction can all the time work and worked uh, in the in the ways of thinking of many leftists. So I would say that this step uh, that is maybe uh, guaranteeing us something or enabling us something more is uh, the step of knowledge production. Before because uh, the the statement of anti-capitalism or left or whatever uh, is the one thing, but the knowledge production that is inherently anti-capitalist or the production of the, the specific argumentation concerning the economic situation, concerning uh, cultural situation, whate whatever, which is uh, based on the specific in experience of the people uh, that, that, are, uh, that know the, the specific situations, that is itself inherently anti-capitalist or based on the class analysis or whatever the tools we have, uh, is, I would say, relatively safe because at this point we 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 uh, 
uh, we we inherently say the things that cannot be uh, uh, misinterpreted. They always can, but I will, I will give you just one example, and it is relatively simple, and it, this is not uh, coherent knowledge, uh, uh, but it is, a, it is a beginning. It is the, uh, the linking of Milosevic to uh, the, the uh, dominant figure on the democratic opposition, uh, the Djindjic. So we have uh, Milosevic, which is this legendary uh, nationalist in the end figure and on the other hand we have Jinjic uh, the the premier from the beginning of the uh, 2000s which was shot in 2004 and this was a big myth is built around him that he was the one that he was the the guy wanting good for Serbia and then they killed him and now whatever yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, and uh, this is and and when you have someone who is shot on the on the on his political uh, uh, job uh, then you have this uh, uh, symbolic of uh, sacrifice and so on and then it is very hard and uh, in in any kind of uh, of uh, uh, broader public uh, it is very hard to 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 question Jinjic in any way and if you say from a leftist position, and I would say this is an example of this knowledge production, that uh, economically looking from from the uh, uh, you know, from the position of critique of capitalism, that Milosevic and Jinjic are the part of the same uh, uh, same uh, uh, reintroducing of capitalism in this part of the world, and that there is no difference, no difference at all. Really, then uh, you say something, and it, this is relative, uh, very hard. Even today, it is very, very hard. Even if the left is now relatively known, at least among some people uh, that know the political scene uh, better in Serbia, uh, when they hear this kind of of statement, it is, it is, uh, you wouldn't believe what kind of reactions it provokes. And uh, I would say this kind of, uh, and it's now obvious that also it is, it is certain that the nationalists would would be uh, 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 almost uh, equally equally provocated if you say something like this. So I would say this is the way because first first step of it because we can do this. We have the empirical uh, uh, data that we need. We uh, more or less can and uh, will be. I would I would say able in year or two. Uh, uh, able to utilize the theoretical apparatus needed, and this this knowledge production would be uh, possible, and we will have it. And at that point, I think that we will uh, be able to control the discussions. And this uh, this is, I, I think, the most important. Because even if you believe that you are a leftist and you believe that your criteria are some uh, autonomous criteria, once you come into the dialogue, if the opposite side is uh, well prepared and they are they were preparing for. 30 years, they exist as political positions for 30 years. And you come with your big words and you have nothing behind, you're, 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 you're dead. It's not, yeah, it's not possible. Just one short one. Uh, you I'm interested in what what are the opportunities of some kind of uh, institutional support for this kind of, uh, let's say, project. So, knowledge production and then we have people who actually are able to do it and they know what to do and, and so on. But what is the what is the, um, the possibility of, let's say, I don't know, academia support, so maybe of this, is there any possibility that uh, some of these people are going to, I don't know, get a job in some kind of institution, trade unions, uh, I don't know, academia, yeah. Society. Uh, what, how, how, how do you, what, what, what situation with, let's say, with the financing or something like this? Because it's, you know, it's going to be based on, I mean, mm -hmm. serious financing. I think if you want to do it like in, uh, in a proper way, you want to do it in a proper way. So yeah. Not to have a first, first result in 100 years, but maybe in five or ten. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I have to be negative on this because. Uh, um, uh, no, no. The 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 the, the, the existing infrastructures uh, are not not relevant because it is. Uh, 
uh, even if it is not uh, obvious when you talk to the people in the institutions, trade unions or uh, institutes or whatever faculties or so, uh, it's even even if it's not obvious that they judge and that they have this uh, inherent criteria that are very 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 precise, uh, I I would say that they have it, uh, and. Uh, I would say that they uh, really know to choose uh, what they should choose and uh, to to uh, uh, to evade uh, having anything to do with with any of us. So uh, at this point, I think we are totally uh, we are we are uh, we have only the civil sector and whatever uh, the the material possibilities we can get there. Uh, at this point, I would say we are we are relatively limited to this and uh, I, I I don't know how this situation changes on the academia in Serbia which is totally politicized uh, like there isn't anyone working in the academia that isn't in this or that way uh, paid the price of being a part of this or that political uh, force uh, in Serbian society uh, uh, I think there the, the change always comes the other way you, you have to be a uh, existing uh, recognized political force uh, uh, and then something opens uh, but the other way uh, I wouldn't say that it ever would go in Serbia in uh, with trade unions maybe maybe situation is relatively different because they uh, as they, they, these institutions in themselves are not uh, so uh, f uh, uh, removed from the from the from the social and political dynamic and they have their own interests and their interests are relatively inherently social and they can be uh, uh, they can uh, 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 there there are dangers that they are going to face and they are starting to face in 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 these years and in, the, in the, these situations they have to find someone who is able to uh, articulate what they want to say and who is uh, able to pursue it to uh, uh, to make arguments for it so at, I would say that there presents there is some kind of opportunity probably in the future but uh, it it is concerned with the question how uh, how uh, how broad is their perspective because uh, they have this uh, we all know it the usual trade unionist logic at this point of uh, uh, making small deals and uh, okay we will accept this but you give us that and so on but uh, uh, these these transformations that are now happening are relatively deep and they uh, don't only uh, they they don't strike the workers uh, uh, only but also strike the trade unions themselves as the political power and their bar bargaining power and uh, if they are able to recognize that their own power political power and uh, uh, position in the society is uh, uh, is it is endangered and will be endangered, and that none of the political positions, uh, are, are existing political positions, has any any kind of beneficial view on this and will help them. Uh, then we could maybe uh, be this this kind of force to to that they would they would start to to work with. Okay, we have time for uh, one more question. Yes, please. Okay, um, I have two really two remarks and. The question, um, first on the topic of knowledge and knowledge production, uh, I'm not really sure that knowledge, as in a certain body of knowledge, is key in endorsing the progressive political position. And, uh, you know, of course, progressive political practice is always grounded in a theoretical background, but I don't think it's, it works that way. I think um, it, that sort of work is uh, more really uh, being uh, more of a missionary than of a teacher, perhaps. Uh, well, and second remark on the topic of the opposition, the old opposition be between uh, first and second Serbia and, you know, this civilized world, this barbaric world. <coughs> well, it's, if, if we are going to see it, <coughs> sorry, everywhere, then it's really going to be everywhere. You know, if we are going to read it into everything, uh, for instance, you know, if I say that an extreme right-wing organization, such as, I don't know, Dveri in Serbia, 
if I call them uh, barbaric and regressive, you can always say, oh, oh you're, you're that sort of uh, person, you, you're going to call yourself civilized and you're going to call them barbaric. And it sort of uh, becomes, you know, um, uh, any time a sort of um, strong language, which I think sometimes really is necessary when dealing with phenomena such as this neo-fascist, you know, renaissance, uh, this can come up. Uh, so I think it's pretty much in the eye of the beholder, often. Mm -hmm. And the question was, you touched on the topic of the um, LBGT rights, issue of LBGT rights, which I think is important because it's an issue that issues, issues such as the, this uh, often get neglected in this sort of discussion. And the question is, do you think that in this specific situation, not only in Serbia, but on the periphery in general, uh, the position is, of the left is somewhat specific and in that it has to, uh, you know, um, it has to stand for also some issues such as, for instance, the political emancipation and integration of the LGBT people. That in uh, the so-called Western countries are, is, are already being dealt with by other agents. So the left has already, you know, has that, has that sort of space or sort of, yeah. that was really my question. Uh, well, first the, the question, then maybe just reaction, short reaction on the commentary. Uh, concerning the question, well, um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I think that uh, there is no backing off uh, on this question. I wouldn't ever like try to, to argue for backing off on this question because it is, I don't know, unpopular or whatever. And I would never even uh, uh, accept this kind of uh, easy uh, or shallow opposition back, backing off on the question and uh, accepting it or pursuing it. Because uh, the, 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 the thing is, how is it uh, presented? how is it uh, uh, what connotation what is the question in the question or, or in the lgbt question and uh, i would say that the work has to be done uh, and uh, i think that it is starting to be done uh, uh, that uh, the question become reframed because it is very framed and it framed in a very specific way with the uh, it is first isolated it is the the, the obvious thing and the, this is the thing that anger is the people the most and we have to acknowledge that this anger is uh, is not totally wrong because if you uh, have like the social situation that you have in serbia and someone says okay we have this problem and this problem will get so much attention and so much uh, possibilities uh, uh, to present itself and others will not get any or uh, almost none uh, then uh, and not only that you, uh, they will not get any but the ones that are pursuing this lgbt uh, politics in serbia are always very uh, 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 very uh, uh, precise on the on that that uh, nothing should be mixed and no sh nothing should get, get intertwined with what they are doing like if someone has any other kind of social issue take it elsewhere like this is our space and they say this uh, uh, we don't want like the 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 some some of the agricultural workers had had some problems at the time of parade a few years ago and uh, they wanted to join the protest they said okay this is a social problem protest we have a social problem uh, we will support you you will support us and uh, this is how the things go and then they said no uh, and they said this uh, you, uh, this is our public space. You, 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 uh, we don't want to give any part of our public space to you. And, uh, you know, this kind of, this way of thinking is, I would say, the, the biggest problem. Uh, because, uh, I, I'm not go, I wouldn't go here, uh, like to some kind of uh, grand uh, narrative on the, how we all have the same struggle and so on, but uh, just this. Uh, basic basic way of communication to say okay this is our private public space private in the end uh, for this particular problem and uh, we uh, we don't want to link it to anything we don't have to do anything with anything uh, 
uh, is obviously uh, framing the question very, very hard, and the people feel it. And I think that uh, the left has to deal with this. Yeah, and if if it deals with it in the right way, uh, I'm not sure sure what will happen because the the framing was so hard for so long, and it it will obviously not uh, uh, be be solved uh, soon. But I would say that things can change if you if you uh, even even and this is the point also I just want to mention it uh, after this uh, this try to to make the parade in Serbia uh, happen this year. Uh, we had uh, we had the debate with some of the organizers, and then uh, people from the, the the position that is not left at all even uh, ask them, okay, uh, uh, you try to do this in this way that you tried, uh, but uh, where do you draw your po your political legitimacy to do it in the way that you did it? And they said like, oh well, we didn't think about this question. It's yeah, it's interesting question. They didn't have any kind of answer, and of course. Uh, LGBT population doesn't democrat democratically elect their representatives and so on. But in the end, if uh, the, 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 the organization that gets most resources and has mo most power and possibility to speak for the LGBT population doesn't think even about the, their uh, legitimacy to represent this, this population, you can see where this thing is going. Sorry, just, just a sentence. Uh, yeah. man. Uh, I wasn't arguing against reframing. Of course, it needs to be reframed. It needs it needs to be rethought. It needs to be taken away from this, uh, you know, NGO and uh, you know this whole liberal talk and isolation. Uh, that wasn't uh, what I was, uh, you know, what I was referring to. I was referring to more. I was referring more to the fact uh, that uh, it is uh, sometimes the left itself here in the periphery in this uh, peripheral capitals countries has to take uh, or, or has to stand for some issues that are considered sort of already being dealt with yeah uh, with by the other West, yeah. agents it, you know it's uh, this this is going to be a, you know not not really a great analogy but like you know uh, in the in, in, in the, uh, Yugoslavia and uh, many other socialist countries uh, ex in, in the time of socialism, you know, socialism had to carry through some tasks that were already done by mm -hmm. capitalist modernization mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the West. That, mm -hmm. that, that, that's what I was talking about in relation to some of political issues. Yeah, uh, just this is the last comment. Yeah, I, I uh, and this is the, the this was one of the main main uh, things I wanted to talk about and I tried to, to talk about in the in the text uh, because uh, and I would say uh, the, 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 the shortest answer is you have to first work in your own backyard and then uh, like then yeah, you can start to address the questions that are obviously addressed by others and that are uh, framed in a way by themselves and uh, uh, I, that's why I say this kind of knowledge production is the first thing uh, because it is something that uh, is it is relatively doable at this point and uh, you can at least start doing it and if you had uh, this uh, uh, knowledge based analysis of the of the peripheral situation specific and its specificities in Serbia and you could explain the things uh, then uh, you could be relatively sure that uh, your analysis on these concrete issues that are relatively, so to say, contaminated or taken up by many, many agents in the society, uh, are you could produce your own uh, position and, uh, and uh, uh, guard it well enough so that it doesn't get uh, uh, mixed or identified with any, any other. Uh, and I, I think that's the way, uh, because if we had this at this point, this analysis, let's say, of uh, transitional period uh, in Serbia, uh, and the, we have it in a precise uh, way done, then uh, talking about this specific issue, uh, its specific history uh, throughout these years, uh, would be possible and we are not we are we don't know we we uh, we feel that something is wrong and we feel uh, that uh, uh, and the only thing that we can say now is the things that i most uh, more or less said but this is not the uh, knowledge based analysis that we need 
uh, based on the on, on the critique of the of the specific transitional processes in Serbia. Only if we have this uh, this kind of analysis, I would say we we would be in a relatively safe safe position to start. Okay, thank you, Sasha. We have to conclude this panel. And to announce the next panel, we will start in, let's say, 20 minutes, 25. Uh, interesting panel on, uh, I have to be flexible because of the situation. Uh, the next panel, uh, the participants of the next panel are Jovica Lončar and uh, Vuk Vukovic. They, are, they will talk about organizational problems on the level of trade unions. Jovica and Vuk about uh, problems of the small left organizations and, and, and parties and their way, how they perceive themselves in a sense. So thank you and see you in 25 minutes.